Hey everyone, Tech OG here, representing those who are 40 and up who love their tech and their games. And this video is going to teach you how to transform your Android phone into one of the best handheld game systems out there. Now, if you've been paying attention to the tech world, the handheld game world, um, there's been now a popularity of handheld game devices that have pre-installed ROMs. ROMs are your games for these um, programs called emulators where you can play old school games on these devices here. So old school devices, what I mean by those are uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, NES, uh, SNES, that's Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Sega Game Gear, Sega Master System, Sega Saturn, Sega CD, those are older game systems. Even the Nintendo Wii or Nintendo GameCube or the um, other game systems, even handheld game systems such as the Nintendo Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, even the Atari Jaguar if you know about that. You know your old school if you know about the, the Atari Jaguar. But anyway, I'm going to show you how your phone can emulate all of those old game systems all on this one device and how you can just basically, basically play those games on the go. Okay, these are the things that you're going to need, and I'm going to um, list these things in the comment section as well, just in case you don't get them all. Um, some of these things are optional, but I would suggest you get these things in order to get the full effect of playing your games on your phone. First thing you're going to need, of course, is an Android phone. Um, I would definitely would suggest you get an Android phone with um, USB Type-C in the middle on the bottom of the phone. So not on the left or right. There are some phones that have it on the left or right. You wanna get one that's in the middle. And that is technically optional, but again, this is just what I would suggest because of the controller that I'm gonna suggest. So again, you just basically need an Android phone and you wanna make sure that your um, phone has a pretty good processor, pretty fast processor. So you wanna get yourself a newer phone. If you can get one two years old, that's fine. Three years old, and I'm gonna be pushing it. But the reason why you wanna get a fast processor is because you wanna make sure um, with the emulators that you want, that um, the processor is fast enough to um, render the games or to have the games play at a good speed. And we call that FPS or frames per second. The higher that number, the smoother the game runs. So, and the lower that number, it may be playable, but might not be totally playable if the number or the FPS is low. So make sure that you have yourself a decent processor. Um, I generally use Samsung phones, so uh, in my personal opinion for Samsung phones, uh, if you can get like the S10 and up, any phone in that um, area, that will be perfect for every emulator to play on that phone. This phone right here, however, this is a um, Galaxy Note 8. And this is my go-to, this is my daily driver phone. Um, don't have an S10, actually I'm recording with a Note 10 right now. But there's an, one couple reasons why I'm using my um, Note 8 as my um, daily driver and you'll find that out in um, a future video. But with this phone right here, because it's definitely um, older than three years old, um, this will not play or um, run every emulator and definitely games for particular emulators at a good frame rate. So for example, the Citra emulator, which emulates 3DS games, does not work very well on this phone. The PS2 emulator um, does not work very well with this phone because the processor is an older processor. So for those particular games, I will have to use a different device. So I mainly use my PC for emulated games anyway. But if you just want something to go, then again, get yourself a nice phone with a good processor. Again, for Samsung, you want to get yourself an S10 or above. So a S10, S10 Plus, Galaxy uh, Note 10, or any phone after that. If you do get yourself an older phone, again, there will be some emulators that you uh, will not run very well on here. And you have to test them out to see which ones will work on your phone. 
Another thing that you're going to need is to, um, the operating system. So with the operating system on Android, you have Android Pie, KitKat, uh, Nugget, and other types of names. So I'm just going to go over the numbers because I really don't know the names um, of some of the operating systems. Um, the operating system that I would suggest you have on your phone should be Android 10 or below. Not Android 11 that came out some time ago and Android 12 which is going to be released soon. I would not suggest those two. I will say Android 10 or below. The main reason why is because uh, with Android 10 and below, if you store particular games for your emulators on your micro SD card, you will be able to get the, or run them from the card if you're using Android 10 or below. If you use Android 11, there that uses um, a particular feature called scope storage where it will not allow you for some applications to access the um, SD card that's in your phone and and use the contents of the SD card with that particular program. So there are some emulators on Android 11 that does not allow you to use your micro SD card to run games from there. You have to put them in your internal storage. So you would definitely would need to have, you know, a good amount of storage on your phone to house all the games that you want. So if you're like me and you want to have a whole bunch of games whenever you want them, then you need as much storage as possible. So um, internally, if you can get a 512, that will be grand. Um, if you know about the S10, on um, the S or the S10 Plus, excuse me, that's the only Samsung phone that had one terabyte of storage. And I'm really interested in getting one of those phones. So if you can get the one terabyte, you're more than ideal as far as storage. And even with the S10 Plus, it has a micro SD card slot that can be read if it's Android 10 or below, where you can have up to two terabytes of delicious storage on one device. So again, Android 10 or below as far as your operating system. Next thing you're gonna need, a nice controller. Here I have the Razer Kishi. I like the Razer Kishi, this uh, controller. Um, you connect your phone via USB Type-C. That's why I said you need to have the port in the middle of your phone. So you can connect it like this. Now, why do I like a direct connection? No latency, which means that when I press right, my character is gonna move right pretty much right away. So we call that um, zero latency. And so the reaction from controller to phone is gonna be so minimum, we call that kind of basically zero latency. So when I press right, character moves right away. If you use a Bluetooth controller, sometimes you might have latency because of the signal going from the phone to the controller via bluetooth you might have a small bit of latency where if you press right it may move right it will move right but it may take a couple of milliseconds from this for the signal from the phone to get to the controller to move the character you get what i'm saying so if you have a direct connection such as this razor kishi controller you will most likely have, most likely have zero latency so it'll just work as you um, press the buttons or move the controller. So that's just my opinion. You can still use a Bluetooth controller. There are some really good Bluetooth controllers out there that have very minimum latency or they call that low latency. So your results may vary. So just test out controllers and find the right one that will be right for you. There's plenty of controllers on Amazon that you can try. I suggest buying from Amazon because you'll get it shipped quickly and you can return it within 30 days if it's not working that well. The last thing you're going to need are ROMs, and I'm going to talk about ROMs separately. I'm not going to talk about how to get ROMs or anything in this video, but I will direct you on how to get them. But um, like I said, I'll just talk about that separately. Okay, now this is the process that you need to follow in order to get this to work as a great handheld gaming device. First thing you want to do is go into the Play Store and type in this word right here, emulators. When you type in emulators, you're going to get a list of different apps, um, and these are, most of them, it depends on what, how you look for them, will be your emulators that you will need for your phone. Now, an emulator basically is a program that transforms your phone into an older game system. 
So for example, this Pizza Boy emulator here, this is a GBA emulator. GBA is an acronym that stands for Game Boy Advance. That was an older Nintendo handheld device, absolutely popular, and this will allow or turn your phone basically into a Game Boy Advance. So you don't need to buy a Game Boy Advance. Your phone's gonna transform into it or emulate into a Game Boy Advance. Some emulators cost money, and there will be some Game Boy Advance emulators on here that are free. But like I said, your uh, results may vary using these um, emulators, so try the ones that will work out for you. I will leave a list of emulators that I particularly like to use in the comment section. Now, one very popular one is called RetroArch. That is one emulator or one app that runs multiple emulators within that one app. A lot of people love that one. I don't particularly use RetroArch because there are emulators that I use that have features that RetroArch doesn't. And so that's why I use the ones that I use. And again, I will leave that um, list in the comment section. But like I said, do your research and find the emulators that's going to work for you on your phone. So download your emulators first from the Play Store. The next thing you want to do is download your ROM. The word ROM, R O M, or if you want to make that plural, ROMs, those are basically going to be the games that you're going to need for your emulators to play on your phone. Now, downloading ROMs and talking about ROMs, that's basically technically illegal. That's why I'm not going to talk about it. However, there are some people that are on YouTube that actually do. So, I'm going to direct you to this person right here. I am subbed under him he or his uh, username is your casual gamer and it says tricks tips tips and tricks and emulation plus news plus gameplay gives you a whole bunch of cool information about roms and emulators for your pc but we're going to use his channel to get roms so you go in here and whichever rom you have you're going to go in here I mean, whichever emulator, excuse me, that you have. So, for example, if you have a Game Boy Advance ROM, I mean, emulator, you're going to go to the site and look up how to get ROMs or games for your Game Boy Advance emulator. So, check out his site, do the research, and you should be able to find some videos on the emulators and the ROMs that you need um, through any of his videos. So, just look for GBA or something like that in these videos to find out how to get ROMs for your emulator. After you get your ROMs, now you want to um, install them onto your phone. So you want to connect your phone to your um, PC and you'll see either, um, how can I put it? You're going to see the file for um, your internal storage. And if you have a micro SD card slot, in our micro SD card in your phone, you'll see um, an icon for the card. So you see phone and card. And I'm just gonna show you real quick uh, my files. So like I said, you can have internal and SD card. I store my ROMs on my SD card and I label them like this. So I have everything in one folder called ROMs. So I made these folders. And inside this ROM folder, I've placed all of my um, games or ROMs inside of these folders. And I have them categorized so I know where each one are. So I do have 3DS, um, Sega Dreamcast, Game Boy, so forth and so on. So when you get your ROMs, place them all in one folder and put them in the spot where you're going to remember where they are. Again, if you're using or if you have a phone that's Android 10 and below, you'll be able to access the game from the micro SD card. If you have Android 11, you got to put everything in your internal storage or on the phone. So no micro SD card. Well, some emulators will be able to do that. And like I said, you can test those out to see which ones. Um, but for the most part, if you're Android 11, put everything on your internal storage. That would be your best bet and your safest bet. So put them all in the folder so that you know where they are. Okay, now that the hard part's done, that should be basically it to get started with playing your games. Now what you want to do is connect your phone to your computer. If you have Bluetooth, you know you would know how to connect it like that. But 
I like using my Razer Kishi, very easy to use and connect, and you're ready to go. Now you should be ready to start playing games on your phone. So you want to connect your controller to your phone, whether you have the Razer Kishi where you can connect it uh, directly to the USB port, or if you have Bluetooth connected that way, and then open up yourself one of your emulators. I'm going to use the MD emulator. MD stands for Mega Drive, which was the Japanese name of the Sega Genesis. So they called it the Sega Mega Drive. Awesome stuff. So here's the emulator right here. And what you want to do is press load game. And now you want to direct this to where you have your games stored. So I'm going to tap up here where it says me there to get to all of these places where stuff is stored on your phone. So you have uh, storage media, storage devices, and root file system. is definitely not in root. It's one of these two. Storage media, I believe that is the internal storage and storage devices. This is going to be the micro SD card slot. Again, if you're using Android 11, you're not going to be able to use or access your card. If you have Android 10 or below, you'll see a funny looking number on the top. These eight characters is basically your micro SD card number. So if you tap on here, I'm gonna scroll on down, and this is all the content that's on my micro SD card slot. I'm gonna to go to ROMs, as I showed you where it was in my files. Go down to where my Genesis games are, and here are all of my ROMs, which is incredible. I'm gonna tap on Devil Crash, which is a cool pinball game. And whenever you connect to directly to a controller, in some, or in some cases, a Bluetooth controller, um, you don't necessarily have to configure. Uh -oh, why isn't it going now? You don't have to necessarily configure the buttons. They are pretty much 99% of the time already configured so that you can start playing right away. So this is going to be my start button. Boom, as you can see, works right away. I didn't have to make any configurations to change any of the buttons or the characters. This is so awesome. So this is a really cool, really cool pinball game. A lot of hidden stages or bonus stages. And as you can see, it plays right away. And a really good frame rate is running really smoothly because this is an older game system running on a quote unquote newer phone. But again, if you have, whoa, bonus stage already, sweet. And this is the first time I ever got to this bonus stage. I never got to this one before. Yo, this is the hot butter on the popcorn. So let me pause it. So there you go. That's how you basically play your games using emulators and ROMs from the internet, Play Store, to play on your phone. So this is a very versatile a uh, handheld game device because there's a lot of different emulators in the Play Store that you can download, put on your phone, and depending on the storage that you have, you can put lots of different ROMs for your different emulators on your phone or micro SD card slot or both to play at your heart's content on the go. So again, I suggest the Razer Kishi, but you can use whatever controller that you would like to get because it all depends on your pockets too on which controller that you can buy when this first came out this was 100 bucks i got this use 40 bucks love this controller so if you like the information in this video definitely leave that thumbs up um, if you have questions and i can answer your questions i will answer your questions in the comment sections so please put your questions down there again i will leave some information in the comment section as well as far as the emulators that i like to use and things like that again you want to find your casual gamer for rom information definitely check him out sub to him too he's pretty precise i like him a lot so that's all that you need for this video so enjoy your games when you get them um if you haven't subscribed to my channel already definitely subscribe so you can get some more content that i create and videos um tell your friends about my channel and i hope to see you in my next video